Hi, this is Tony at Cover Magazine. I'm speaking to Ayanda Siboni, the Group Executive um, for Mutuality at PPS. Ayanda, thank you so much. It's great to be chatting to you again. Thank you, Tony. And uh, it's lovely to be on this platform and speaking to our intermediary community. Uh, brilliant, brilliant. Thank you. Um, we, we're talking a little bit around your leadership background and your leadership skills and all of that, because I know you're also involved a lot with leadership initiatives and that sort of thing. So I think maybe to start off with, um, you know, we live in an environment that is very fast moving, it's fast changing, uh, you know, from a personal and a business um, perspective. So, you know, when you look at it from that perspective and your experience, um, which are the sort of universal um, um, leadership principles that you see as important to be successful as a leader? Sure. Um, leadership is one of those, those things that is, is so crucial for, you know, society, for business, uh, for, for, for everyone, in fact. And, and I guess it's got some universal laws and, and application is where we, we all differ. I think the, the most important thing, especially in these days, is to be adaptable, you know, is mm -hmm. to understand that we are in a world that is constantly changing. Um, our paradigms change, our beliefs change. As we get more information, we need to adapt. As the environment changes, we need to adapt. And as leaders, um, we need to take time out and, and really evaluate, understand the situation, understand the nature of where you're operating and what's required at that time and be, and, and be adaptable. You know, situational leadership is, is, is crucial um, for, for business leaders and even societal leaders um, in general because different situations require different type of competencies. Another um, element that's important in, in leadership is, is authenticity. Um, I think it's one of those very underrated qualities in a leader is a leader that is authentic. We, we all don't have to be the same. Um, people resonate with different styles, et cetera. So being true to yourself as a leader um, is, is very important. It's very important to be um, authentic. And while you're being authentic, also empathetic. Understanding that there are multiple perspectives in any situation, there are multiple vantage points, and, and being empathetic to another person and where they are coming from. My belief is very strong that most people actually try to do good. They, they wake up in the morning and they try and do their best. And sometimes things don't go as well as what they intend, but that's not an indictment on the person. You know, if you have a bit of empathy and you try and find out where they were coming from, what led them to this place and helping them to see another perspective. You know, you generally find better outcomes if you follow that approach rather than just a uh, rebuke and retribution. So empathy is an important one. And then um, as a leader, the other big thing is to make sure that you share the vision and make sure that you have followership. You know, leadership mm -hmm. is nothing mm -hmm. without followership. Follow so people yeah. need to understand what the vision is, share in the vision contribute to the vision. You know, you're not Moses coming down with the scrolls and saying to people, these are the, the rules. You, you need to co-create um, some of the, the, the content so you can get the level of buy-in. So be flexible, you know, be, be teachable and be coachable as a leader as much as you're teaching and coaching others. Mm -hmm. So it's important that um, the vision is, is socialized, is shared, and then it is uh, implemented as a joint and owned um, initiative, whatever it may be. Mm, mm, yeah, I know that makes a lot of sense. Now, Ayana, putting your marketing specific hat on, which is not that much diff different, I suppose, from uh, the leadership hat, but there are a couple of things. I mean, some of the principles, sort of basics of marketing is that you have to know your client, you have to know what they need, you have to know how to meet them where they are, all of those sort of things. You know, it's very specific to who your actual client is. Now, PPS focuses on a very specific market, the professional market. And then on top of that, PPS is uh, a mutual. And so for me, in terms of those people being your clients, being professionals as such, 
and you being a mutual, how do you marry those two? What are the, the, the sort of principles of mutuality that you take to them that resonates? So, you know, mutuals are a, a very special um, group of, of, of institutions because mutuals are owned by their members. So at their core, mutuals don't have the, the, the much spoken about conflict between what the shareholder needs and what the client yeah. needs, et cetera, because the client is the, the essentially the shareholder. So, you know, the, the, how you market, I guess, and how you engage from a, from a mutual perspective is you, you engage with your, your members who are also your shareholders. So you need to always find the points of alignment. You need to find areas where you know, people are feeling pain and you are, you are solving that because they've come together and created this business to solve mm. a specific problem. And I'll give you an example from a, from a PPS perspective. You will know, Tony, that um, a few years ago, the medical indemnity fraternity was under significant strain yeah. because yeah. the premiums are going up. Uh, it was just, and basically it became an uninsurable risk. You know, mm. the, the things were just not, um, not fully affordable. And as PPS, we have quite a dominant uh, um, segment in the, the medical fraternity. They came to us and they said, listen, we're taking strain where uh, indemnity is concerned. What can you do? And we came mm. to the party and said, well, then we'll start a medical indemnity business partnered with uh, partners in the U.S. Because obviously we, we don't, we, we're not uh, <laughs> negligent. You know, we will, we will not go where angels fear to trade. But if we do yeah. go, we go with great care and caution. So we, 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 we partnered with a, a U.S.-based company and you know how the litigation goes on that side. But doing mm. that was about just understanding what our market needed, uh, what solution, what was the problem, mm. what was the solution, mm. and then finding the best way to deliver to their needs um, using the, the, you know, the, 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 the power that we have and, and the networks that we have in, as, as a mutual um, globally. Mm. Yeah. And, and I mean, making those sort of decisions, I suppose it's easier when your shareholders are in it with you as to those decisions, you know? Yeah. Yes. Um, and as a mutual, obviously, you know that um, our board is, is uh, unique in that people get nominated. So anybody who is a, 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 mem a member in good standing, someone who's holding a, a, a product with PPS, a qualifying product with PPS, can stand to be, um, to be a board member. And mm. so we have on our board a very diverse set of skills. We've got people that are in industry. We've got people that are in academia. We've got people that are running their own small practices, et cetera. And all those perspectives actually melt together and, and give us a very rich overview of our market and what's going on, like in the world of um, a local dentist or in the world of a local pharmacist or an accountant, mm. et cetera. Because we have them on our board, um, you know, they will critique our strategy, they'll critique, and they'll tell us the experience as well. And they're also very well networked within their own communities to give us that feedback. So that's another benefit um, of a mutual is that you, you get a very unique set of skills that other organizations would not necessarily have. Mm, absolutely. So now, Amelia, in closing a little bit and coming closer to our audience at cover, how can advisors learn from the above and what can they apply? You know, which of those sort of uh, principles that we spoke about now um, can they apply to um, in their business? And similar to the mutuality principles, you know, that you spoke about, um, can they apply for themselves? So uh, advisors, I mean, they, they probably are, they, I always say that they are the keepers of people's secrets. Uh, you know, yeah. the, the kind of things that they know about their clients and the kind of um, client intimacy that they have with, the, with their clients is, is, is crucial. So it's important that when dealing with, with their clients, you know, this principle of, of being empathetic, not mm -hmm. judgmental. Mm -hmm. I mean, people will share with you, sometimes they're not that financially literate, et cetera. But if you, if you create a, a space where you can show that you're empathetic, and you are there to serve and to support your clients. I think mm -hmm. that builds a lot of trust. It fosters trust. It really helps them um, to 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 buy in to whatever it is that is being uh, is is being prepared. Having that shared vision as well, you know, listening to what matters to the person. We have mm -hmm. different cultural backgrounds. You know, we have. 
people who have got obligations that you might not agree are real obligations. But if your client feels like that is something that is important to them, it's important that you share your vision, they share their vision for themselves, their families, et cetera, and you work together to make, um, to make that happen. You know, and, and being client-centric is also about serving the needs of the client mm. before serving mm. your own needs. And if you serve the needs of the client consistently, you build trust and the business will flow. Mm. You know, um, eventually those very clients bring you more clients because they know that you're trustworthy. They know that whatever you do, you're looking after their best interests rather than your own best interests. So it's important that they, they think about, you know, empathy. Sharing the, uh, sharing the vision with, uh, with, with, with their clients, making sure that they're, they're client-centric in whatever it is that they do, and then also being adaptable because life happens. And if anyone knows life happens, it's advisors. Um, life happens, and when life happens, um, you know, your advisor must be there by your side and must be able to adapt the plans to help you to get to where you want to get to. Yeah, absolutely. Wise words. Ayanda, thank you so much. It was really great chatting to you. And um, yeah, I look forward to speaking to you again in the near future. Thank you very much, Tony.